Hi, I am Luke Oxley, a veteran of Team 6498. And in this presentation, I am going to be talking about the FRC control system. To start things off, I am going to do a description on each of the components that we generally see on our robots. The first one is the PDP or power distribution panel. And this is where all of the power enters and exits through the robot. The main function of this device is to distribute power in its name and to also protect the robot from shorting. So this board has a bunch of fuses and breakers that will protect from surges in current or a potential short. So everything such as the RoboRio, motors, sensors, they all get power from this device. The next is the breaker switch. And this is a 120 amp breaker that we usually use to turn the robot on and off. You can see that there's a lever and a red button. To turn the robot on, we flip the lever closed and to turn it off, press down on the red button. Next is the VRM or the voltage regulator module. And the main function of this is to supply power to the router. However, if we're using sensors, those will also get their power from this device. And you can see that there are 12 volt ports and five volt ports. And the rule of thumb is that when connecting the router, it is the only thing that can be connected to the 12 volt 2 amp port. Next is the Roborio, or we kind of call it the brains of the robot, because this controls everything on the robot. It is what runs our program and connects to the motor controllers and sensors and does what we tell it to do. And to kind of give a rundown, of the ports on this thing. We have an ethernet port, and this is what connects to our router or radio. And that's how we can connect to the Roborio from the laptops. Another option to connect to this is the USB port. That's if we are tethering by USB. The power port right here is where the Roborio will connect to the PDP to get its power. Next is the CAN bus port, which is right here. This is the start of the CAN bus. And usually the CAN bus will terminate on the PDP. I'll talk about this more later, but that's generally where the CAN bus will start. Next is the DIO port. DIO stands for digital input output. And this is where we can give input and output signals to our sensors and limit switches and stuff like that. Next are the analog input ports right here. And these are used for if we have a sensor that has an analog signal, we can connect it to these ports. Last but not least are the PWM ports, which are right here. And these are used for a PWM motor controller. Next is the router. And this is how we can wirelessly, wirelessly connect to the robot from a laptop. And it's just like any other router. It just outputs a Wi-Fi signal. And this does connect to 12 volt, two amps on the VRM. And the ethernet cable goes from this radio to the Roborio. And I wanted to go over some of the basic motor controllers that we use on this team. The most basic is the Spark motor controller because it is PWM controlled and there's not much to it at all. There's just power in and motor out. It also has limit switch ports right here for if we want to 
make sure that if we have like a lift or something, we can stop the lift from moving before it tears itself apart. Next is the Talon motor controller. This actually has CAN bus functionality. Uh, one of the advantages with using CAN bus is that we can daisy chain all of these motor controllers together, whereas using PWM, we have to make individual connections back and forth from the rubber Rio, and that usually builds up and makes quite a mess. Also with the Talon, it has an encoder and limit switch inputs, and it's able to actually run its own algorithms on board, and this opens up a lot more functionality. The Falcon, which is very similar to the Talon, except it is a brushless motor, and the motor controller is actually built in to the motor itself. So this actually saves space and weight quite a bit, and it's also very powerful. Last is the beacon light. This is mainly for safety. Whenever it's illuminated solidly, we know that the robot is turned on. And whenever it's enabled or flashing on and off, we know that the robot is running whatever program is on it. So generally, whenever the beacon light is flashing, we make sure that we stay clear of the robot to make sure that we don't get hurt. Now I want to go over how all of these components connect to each other. So to start off, we have the battery and the PDP. All of the power starts and comes from the battery. So to connect the battery, we connect the ground wire and the breaker is connected on the positive or red wire. And also, as a reminder, this is how we turn the robot on and off. Next, the Roborio. The Roborio, just like everything else, gets this power from the PDP. And if you look up close to the PDP, it actually has a port labeled Roborio power. And so that's where it connects to. Next is the router and VRM. The VRM gets its power from the PDP, and you'll see that on the PDP, it actually has three power ports. The VRM goes to one of the auxiliary ports. The other auxiliary port is used for the PCM or pneumatics control module. I will go over the pneumatics in a separate tutorial. And the, as I said before, the radio gets its power from the VRM, like that, on the 12 volt 2 amp port. Now to communicate back and forth between the Roborio and the radio, we have the ethernet cable. And generally, it doesn't really matter which ethernet port the ethernet cable is connected to on the radio, but you may eventually find that one of these is better than the other. An alternative wiring, which is what we usually use on our robots, is PoE. This stands for Power Over Ethernet. And this allows for a much more stable connection for power to the radio, because the black port on the radio, the one right here, we have had many issues with the wire coming loose and actually almost basically lost state because of that. So use PoE. Next is the beacon light that is powered by the port on the Riberio labeled RSL. Okay, so say we want to connect a motor to our robot. In order to drive the motor, we need a motor controller. And the motor controller gets its power from the ports along the PDP. In order to communicate with this controller, in this case, this is a Talon motor controller, we connect the CAN bus starting from the rubber Rio going to the motor controller. Now, generally, with a CAN bus, it terminates on the PDP. However, sometimes, like our robot in 2020, the CAN bus 
can't really terminate on the PDP, that's okay. We would just put a termination resistor on the end of the bus. And that does it for a basic wiring of the FRC control system. Thank you.